Well, it's so nice to see everybody's faces again. Round two. Here we go. Well, this is, of course, Kathy Coleman played Holly. And Phil Paley played Chaka. He shaved for you guys. <laughs> what he, you, you don't know the secret is if he took his shoes off, they're claws and hair. It's really, it's yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> and I'm Wesley. I, I played Will Marshall on Land of the Lost. How do you pronounce your last name? Ewer. Ewer? Uh-huh. Okay. Like Europe without the up. <laughs> it's named, my family's name, there's, there's two rivers that run through Paris. There's the Seine and the Ewer. And so that's where our family came from. So we were river rats, I guess. <laughs> um, so to start, did you guys know that Kathy and Phil, before Land of the Lost, <laughs> He's starting with this? I'm starting. I'm starting. Is this where you're starting? Yeah. They were in a commercial <laughs> together. They were, how old were you? I must have been nine, eight or nine, eight. Maybe. And nine. you were how old? See, now I think I was about. Yeah, you were younger nine. than that. Oh, yeah. maybe I was seven. Yeah, you were, you were a little baby thing. I saw that. My memory. So they did a commercial together for Cheetos. No, Cheetos. Cheez uh, Cheez Cheez and yeah. you, you guys remember, I've seen the commercial. It's on YouTube. You can see it. But remember the, the things, the, the Volkswagen thing, that boxy looking car? They were in there. They played brother and sister with their parents. And Kathy, tell them what's happened. <laughs> well, Okay, so anyway, we, we had this theme song, or not theme song, we had this song in the in the back of this little vehicle. And you'd like to sing it? Uh, <gasps> for everyone. Would you sing it? <gasps> sure. You want them to sing it, guys? <laughs> this is their musical number that, that, that introduced the two of them when they were, they were uh, before Land of the Lost. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. I like munching. I like crunching. We like eating, eating cheese it. its Great cheese tastes in every bite. We, we like, like eating cheese its Oh, I like munching. I like crunching. I like. We like eating, eating cheese its cheese I love the wild taste of cheese. Hey, more cheese its please. They're great crunching crackers. <laughs> <laughs> And who knew that years later the brother and sister would become uh, become a uh, girl and monkey? <laughs> That's right. Phil, tell everybody. Pakuni. Uh, Pakuni. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I, not a monkey. Astro, the scene. I don't know Thank you. Thank you. So, Phil, tell tell everybody how you got the job on land. Uh, on land of the lost. Yes. Yes. Um, I got the job. <laughs> I auditioned for the job. Uh, I was. Uh, about 10 years old, I think, when I auditioned. Um, and I had just uh, been on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson uh, because I was the youngest black belt in US history at age nine. And my teacher was Chuck Norris. And uh, so I did a little bit on Johnny Carson and uh, an agent saw me on the show and uh, signed me up. And the first interview I went out on was for Land of the Lost, uh, for Chaka. And, uh, so during the, during the interview, I did some karate, and they liked the way, you know, that they could see that I had the physicality, um, you know, that was needed for the part to run around like a, a little, you know, bakuni boy. And so I, I got the job really quickly, too. Like, I, I did the interview, and I found out, like, that night that I had got the, the part. But, and I was they, really excited. And they also, didn't you have to... Uh, to go, how did you learn to be Chaka? Oh, uh, when I after they uh, we got the part, they sent uh, myself and um, Joe Jamalva, who played uh, Ta, and uh, Sharon Baird, who played Saw. Uh, they sent us to uh, go see 2001: a, a Space Odyssey to watch the apes and how they uh, performed uh, in the movie, and then they also sent us to the zoo to actually. Uh, uh, watch the apes at the zoo, and so that's how we did our our uh, uh, background character background for for. for you the know, it was, it, and it was amazing because I mean, you guys know that the language was was a real language that was created uh, by, by Victoria Fromkin, who was a language professor at UCLA, and the Crofts uh, hired her to create uh, Pakuni language specifically for the show. And the language itself is primarily 
uh, made up of Western, uh, Western African uh, language, I forget the name of it, um, and then there was some like uh, a couple other languages mixed in, there may have been like some uh, Mayan, Mayan uh, words in there as well, and um, that's how the language was created. Right, and there's a dictionary, right? Yeah. There is a dictionary. Yes. We, we, in fact, we had a contest uh, we, with our fans, and we, we had a prize. If you could take the theme song of Land of the Lost and put it into Pakuni. And Lynn Jepson, this, this lady, if you go on Facebook, she recorded it. And she came the closest to, to making it. I, 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 we should learn at one point. Do you guys know the theme song to Land of the Lost? Will and Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapids, it struck their tiny raft. Ah! Plunged them down a thousand feet below to the land of the lost. To the land of the lost. <laughs> and the and the closing, you guys know it. In fact, uh, 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 Jake Gyllenhaal in the movie Bubble Boy for Disney, he he pretends he's me. His favorite show is Land of the Lost, and he opens Bubble Boy singing, rocking out with. When I look, look all, all around, around, I can't believe the things I found. Now I need to find my way. I'm lost, I'm lost. Find me living in the land of the lost, 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 lost. living in the land of the lost. <laughs> Remember the <laughs> and Wesley actually was the original uh, singer of both the. Uh, uh, intro and the exit song. Yes, and in the third year, we, the Osmonds. You guys know the Osmonds. We used to go. To, I used to go to their house across from the temple, the Mormon temple in on Santa Monica Boulevard in Los Angeles. They had an apartment house. <laughs> it was so odd. And they they wrote songs, and I would sing them. I had a, a four string homemade guitar that sounded like an orchestra. I don't know how that happened with strings and stuff. So we would go in and sing these little ditties that, that the Osmonds <laughs> wrote. And they had the oddest house, guys. It was so odd. They were the richest. They were so rich, these people, right? But their, their apartment house, you walked in and some of the light plate switches were missing. And it was like, it was odd. It wasn't, it was like, it was, it was just sparse and nothing there. It was kind of, it was an odd sort of thing. And you worked, did you work with the Osmonds when you sang? I did, uh, but it was after, it was not after Land of Lost, but during. I did, uh, I did the Donnie and Marie show, just one little quick little, I danced with Jimmy. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. But Kathy had, Kathy was, tell, tell us about, you had a singing career before Land of the Lost. Yeah, prior to getting Land of the Lost, I um, was in a band, Mike Curb's band, and we did two national tours. And I performed with all the old greats from uh, Burt Bacharach to George Burns and Sammy Davis. And wow. I mean, just all these unbelievable Bob Hope, uh, Dionne Warwick. I mean, just I've got like a list of all these older celebrities. That how I've been old, able were, to how sing. old were you when you did I that? got the job in the band when I was 10 and I did two national tours. And then the craziest thing, though, is. I auditioned for a show that, I don't know if it aired before Land of Lost in your neighborhood or your neck of the woods, but it was a show called Run Joe Run. German Shepherd. Yeah. German Shepherd. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I went on an interview. I used to go on, like after the, I started uh, trying to uh, peter out from the band, I start, was going on like three, four interviews a week. And I went on this one for Run Joe Run, but it was just for one episode. And uh, uh, I went on with maybe 100 girls for the first audition, and then it got down to just two of us. It was myself and Christy McNichol that got the final call back. Well, she wound up getting the part, and it shot. I think we went, the final word was on Friday that I did not get it, and the shooting of the commercial would have been on that following Wednesday. Well, that following Wednesday, had I got that, one episode show of Run Joe Run, I would have missed the first initial interview for Land of the Lost. So, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And uh, 
started going on interviews for land loss. It took seven separate interviews to finally land it. It's just callbacks. You have to meet the heads of NBC. You have to meet producers, directors, the cast. They were wanting to see what the chemistry was yeah. between each of us. And um, we all got that many callbacks. But one time I walked in and Phil was in there. And I go, what are you doing here? And he says, I'm auditioning for the show Land of the Lost. And I thought, that's so funny You're that like, we're doing too. it again. Yeah. So, yeah. But what, you know, Kathy had that iconic look with the braids and the red plaid shirt and everything. And that wasn't created by Land of the Lost. Well, my mother actually pretty much had me dress that way for the interviews. And uh, my agent at the time used to always say, when you go on an interview, never on the callbacks change your look. They like what they saw the first time. Do not change your look. So all seven times of going in, I wore that same outfit. So I don't know if it burned a hole in their eyeballs. And they said, well, God, I guess she is going to wear that for another three years. <laughs> exactly. Let's go with the look she's wearing. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I think that's kind of cool that your mom actually created that look yeah yeah it was pretty amazing I know Did, and I'm known as the other you know, girl with the, the well, people call them pigtails ponytails whatever yeah but, and the red checkered shirt so that, that yeah it was it, it was amazing and my sister actually named her daughter Holly and, and my niece actually got to meet Michael Jackson one time and he says she said can I get your autograph and he said what's your name and she said Holly and he goes I love the name Holly, and I was like, oh, "How cool!" Michael Jackson liked Holly, <laughs> <laughs> and I I got the job because I was on Days of Our Lives at the at the, the time I just started. I was playing Mike Horton, which I did for about eight eight ish years. On uh, continued, so I had met Sid Croft at a party, and he said, "I've got a new show. Come audition." So I auditioned, and I think I went to one audition, and then they called me, and I got it. So, uh, in fact, I I'd been flown to New York. I was going to do uh, Candide for uh, David Merrick, the Broadway musical. And I got the call, and, I, and they said, you got Land of the Lost. And I go, oh, yeah. I was 20 years old. And they said, you're, and I was playing 16, because I looked really young at the time. And I said, oh, I don't know if I really want to play 16. I'm on Days of Our Lives. I've got a Broadway musical if I want to do the musical. So I had to choose a Broadway musical or Land of the Lost. And I'm glad I chose Land of the Lost, you know, ob for obvious reasons. But so in the, both of them were NBC shows. So I did soap opera in the morning. They made, they made this deal that I could shoot all my scenes and the cast hated me. All the cast in Days of Our Lives hated me because I got to film all my scenes first and leave. And they were all like stuck going, hey, you say. And for that was for three years we did Land of the Lost. And so in the, in the morning, I'm crying that my girlfriend is leaving me and, and I'm having sexual problems and my, 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 the mafia is after me. And in the afternoon, I'm going, run, Holly, run, there's a dinosaur. <laughs> so it was just a little schizophrenic. Before we, anybody have a question be, uh, that, that something that anybody would like to ask us, be brave. Yes. Do you guys have a favorite Land of the Lost episode? That's a good question. Do we have a favorite Land of the Lost episode? Phil, what's, what's yours? Well, I usually say the musician because I got to play myself, but I, I think I like the, the, the uh, first episode, uh, which is called Chaka. It was the first episode of the show. I just think the writing was excellent, and I just think just how uh, the show kind of flowed was really it was really well put together and it, it set uh, a good precedent for the rest of the series. And you guys know that our writers were, the, at least the first year or so, was, were Star Trek writers. David Gerald wrote Chaka, which was, he wrote Trouble with Triples, he created the triples for Star Trek. And Walter Koenig, Chekhov, the original Chekhov in Star Trek, created Enoch or wrote the first episode introducing Enoch. And I like this, I don't know if you guys, Kathy and I have done the Star Trek convention in the real, the big one, every, for six years in a row, right? We go to Vegas and Walter's there and he's like, he's got his hat on. He's hunched over, yeah. He, he walks by our table and goes, I should have got residuals. I should have got residuals. Those damn crops. I should have got residuals. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> he is great. He is, he is so much fun. He comes up and we take a picture and stuff. Kathy, what was your favorite? I liked all the ones where there was a lot of activity, like when we got to go into the pool, I liked that, I liked the climbing, I was an athlete, I was a gymnast, so like Phil, we were, and we were, you know, kids, so any kind of 
playing around was fun for us. But anyway, my favorite episode, um, which turned into a lifelong friendship, was with the woman. Her name was Erica Hagen, and she played me in the future. And uh, she just was such a neat lady, and, and we became really good friends from just the, that episode. And she spent some really important quality time with me as a young girl and kind of like form my thoughts, you know, and just it was just a really neat relationship I, I was able to have with her. And she wound up actually, I wrote a book a few years back and she wrote the foreword to my book. And I got to tell her, I said, you have no idea what you meant to me when I was a little girl. She was so beautiful and she was so well-rounded in her heart and her thoughts and, and everything. And I said, you have no idea the impression that you made on me as a young girl. She said, I had no idea. You know, and it's so it's just nice. You know, there's probably people in your own lives that have no idea the impression that they've made on you, you know. And uh, it's nice to be able to come full circle and uh, do you have that, to share that. Do you have that picture of the two of you? It's on the table. Yeah, yeah. there's a picture of Kathy and, and, and Erica in the show, and there's a picture of them as adults. And it's a beautiful, if you come by the table, Kathy will show it to you. But yeah, who the wrote, episode, who, who, oh, DC okay. Fontana wrote that episode, and it's called Elswin. And, uh, yeah, so. And DC Fontana was a woman. Yes. Who had uh, the name of a, well, it's going to be a male sounding, but. Well, there wasn't there wasn't hardly any sci-fi. Sci yeah, female. They sci -fi yeah, they weren't hiring. They weren't hiring women to write sci-fi. Yeah. It was really it was a rough time for women. So she took DC as the initials Dorothy. Dorothy, it's her name is Dorothy, and uh, became very famous. And I think she also wrote the episode that's my favorite, called The Circle. And I think it was the end of the first season. It's I. It, I you know, Land of the Lost didn't talk down to kids. That's what was amazing. The science fiction, I know it looks hokey today, but if you watch the scripts, a lot of them, many of them, most of them, are really interesting sci-fi. So the circle is, there's the time doorway, and Enix is looking at the time doorway, and things keep repeating and repeating, and we're, I'm in with Enix, and, and I go, he, he goes, you, you, you have to go home. And I go, you, Enix, you mean we can go home? He goes, no, 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 you must go home. Three must leave for three to enter, right? And it was, that, I mean, that concept. Imagine this for little kids with the bowl of cereal in front of the TV, right? Wow. So what happened was Kathy and I and our dad had to go through the mist doorway. And as soon as we went through, we made it back to Earth. And our doppelgangers came in, and it was us as with our doppel, you know, our, our lookalikes and our whoever likes, and we were in the land of lost for the first time looking around and we found the cave and it all started over again. Can you imagine that for kids? What a great sci-fi. And we've had more people come up to our table that are scientists or archeologists that became interested in their field because of land of lost. In fact, tell them, tell them about JPL. Yeah. Yeah. Tell we them had this. these two brothers come up to our table one day we were in Los Angeles and, uh, they were from Persia, and so they saw the show when they were children, and and it was in Farsi. We spoke Farsi when they saw it. Of course, Persia is now Iran, but anyway, they uh, they said we wanted to come and thank you because without us having been you know fans of your show, we would not have become scientists today. And they had driver's licenses in their wallet that were from Mars. It was the most bizarre thing we had ever seen. Well, they wound up inviting us to JPL and they gave us a tour like no other. They were two we were, heads of JPL. They had, they were that, that amazing scientists. We were taken into the bowels of JPL that I don't think many people no. are able to see. There were screens in this one room, this big room, and the room was very dimly lit. And we walked in there and there was just one man in the corner, like a joystick. and. We got to go in and we actually got to touch the joystick and move it around. It was Rover on Mars. It, he was, it was, we got to drive the Mars Rover. And then, but and now the way it works was they program it. It's, it, it takes eight hours to send the signal. So they program the day, they, they go through the computer back and forth, make sure it's gonna work and not, they see the bumps in the road and all that kind of stuff. And then they, after they approve the programming, then they send it on to Mars eight hours and it and the computer does it automatically and then they had this thing in the corner with these glass 
like drops of oil that almost looked like these glass, remember? Mm -hmm. And that was like the intelligence coming down. It was really yeah. like the information that they sent, but you could visually see it. It was well, the, no, it, the guy that was doing this was the most famous. He'd, ridden, he'd driven every rover uh, that had landed on Mars. And he had his driver's license, he was the guy. And you have to go through all these different security panels. And this is the final one, the most secure at JPL. And when we told other people that we were, oh, we're going to go over and see this guy, they go, what, what? No one's allowed in there. And they were all fans of the show. Yeah. Which was extraordinary. And we had people coming out of the woodwork going, do you think we could get a picture with them? Do you think we could get pictures with you guys? These are all like, and it's so funny, they're, you know, they're just little boys in, in, in big men's clothes, you yeah. know? I got a just, question. Yes. How come I wasn't invited to that? <laughs> oh. Where was I? Well, you didn't do the show with us in LA. Chaka was bad. Chaka bad. Chaka bad. <laughs> Chaka bad. Okay. You remember what you did? You remember? Okay. okay. All right. All right. <laughs> yes. Question in the back. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know Theodore Sturgeon wrote an episode. Do you meet him? Uh, I don't. I don't know if we ever met Theodore. Um, I don't think so. But writing for her to Right. Well, the thing was, David Gerald, of course, had worked for Star Trek, and he brought all of his pals in who needed a job. You know, this is before they were all really, really famous, you know, sci-fi writers with novels and everything. So that's how we got it. Just want to say, you see the effect you had on me. <laughs> well, we, we just first, no. we'd like to apologize, first of all. <laughs> you help me out? Time I go to come back normal? I'm afraid, sir, you are stuck. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Bad boy. Bad. <laughs> you shouldn't have put the blue crystal with the yellow. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> we told you, we told you, we told you. Yeah, look at the skylines. Okay. What, what's yeah, you? I'm just wondering, uh, whatever happened to other people involved with the show? That's a good question. Whatever happened to other people involved in the show? Well, Walker Edmonston. Tell, t yeah, Kathy, tell, you, you uh, knew Walker, right? Uh, after I, the show? Well, I didn't know, uh, not too much, actually. Kathy, Kathy met, knew him. I, after the the show. last time I saw Walker, we were at. Well, well, first of all, Walker Atlanta. played. Oh, well, he was Enoch. Um, he was also the old timer miner that we had on the show. Remember the guy with the cannon? He was, that was him, but he was also Enoch as well. Um, but he and I did Dragon Con in Atlanta together. And uh, his wife had passed away many years prior to, like I'd say 20 years before we did the Dragon Con show together. And for some reason at that show, this very bizarre thing took place. And Walker said, cause his wife had said, you know, don't you rush to come after me. You know, you have a lot of work left to do. So you take your time. And he said he had been give, granted permission to to pass. And so wow. I spent the last like week with Walker in his life and it was really it was interesting to witness that. You know, so he's with his wife in heaven and uh, it was really a very beautiful thing. We did yeah. Schiller together all, all of us and I, this a guy named Kier, if you guys seen he he bought the Enoch costume yeah. Oh, yeah. and he totally re redid it. And so we he was in the room with us. And I think he spent like, I don't know, it was, it was 60, I think $60,000 or something to refurbish the Enoch to find the fabric because it was really trashed, he said, and the jewels on the hands and stuff like that. But what was so weird was it was perfectly done. And I, you know, I hadn't seen that costume or Walker <laughs> since the show was over and Walker had passed on. And being in that room and it was on a mannequin, so it was looked like a real, I started to cry. I mean, I just like... It was like being with Walker in the same room because when we did the show, Walker was in the costume and, he, and the voices were live. It wasn't dubbed. He was speaking and making the mouth move at the mm -hmm. same time. So it was a complete costume. You know, it wasn't like, because Walker also did the voice, I think, of Sigmund the Sea Monster. Right? I think is that? He did many voices. Many voices. Many, 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 many. Cartoon voices. There's a horror movie. What's that one with the little, like, crazy? What is it? There's a little voodoo, like Hawaiian kind of guy. Yeah, okay. that's Walker. He was the little like yeah. zombie guy or whatever. Yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, a lot of the writers, of course, went on did really well. To answer your question about what I happened, like this in hopes of you know, Sid know Marty, Sid about. Marty Crofter, I get in trouble. Sid Marty Crofter, you know, still around. They're getting old. They're, I talk to Sid all. Well, you know, you don't talk to Sid. I listen to Sid all the time. I'll call him. I'm going, hi, Sid. He goes, ah, let me tell you the story, and, and it goes on for an hour, and it's the best story you've ever heard in your life. He talks about being in the Barnum and Bailey sideshow when he was seven years old as a puppeteer. He was in the freak show, which was the guys that, the geeks that ate, that pulled the heads off the chickens. He was at the lowest rank. He was seven years old traveling by himself in Barnum and Bailey. And he would do a puppet show as the youngest puppeteer in the world. And he would sell for 25 cents these puppets, little puppet puppets. And he said, don't open them until you get home because they didn't work. He would say, so I talked to Sid and Marty and Marty, 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 he's like, ah, just like, just like Walter Koenig, ah, Marty, how much is it going to cost? Well, that's too much. And um, so, so those guys are, are still around. And, and Sid, by the way, people have asked me, well, was Sid high? Were they high when they wrote these shows? Lidsville, Puff and stuff, all this stuff. So at Comic-Con, a few years ago, Sid goes, all right. I did inhale. <laughs> he finally admitted it. Yeah, uh, Spencer Mulligan. I, there was a you guys were searching for Spencer. Yeah. Is that is that out on some sort of DVD or? Uh, it's not out because we had uh, there was a problem with one of the crew members okay. who uh, didn't want to sign a release and. We're like, well, we can't put it out unless you sign this thing. And he like wanted like some percentage uh, weird. for the thing that he didn't really deserve. So we just said, okay, fine. And, we'll and, then, and he was just a, a, an av. He wasn't even part of the camera crew or anything. He was somebody that the entire three-hour trip that we were filming this whole really really neat documentary we were sharing all of our stories with each other we were laughing we were crying I saw the edited thing yeah it was really really good and uh, the whole time he kept saying you know what thank you thank you thank you I feel so honored this is so much fun and then to turn around and do that at the very end was so yeah wow was a shocker but it, 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 it was quite it was quite a day I must say and there was a surprise ending which Hopefully we will one day be able to show this and, and show you the surprise ending, which will be a shocker. But but then of course a year you know last year we were all in Milwaukee with Spencer. He finally did his first his first show. It'll be his only one, I think. Um, we try to get him to come see others. He's yeah yeah I want to do it. And when it comes down to it, he's like I don't no, know if I, I can make it. Yeah exactly. Phil is. We we talk to him now. He'll call. <laughs> Spencer always at dinner time, right? Always. Always goes. Always. Yeah, I'll pick up for me. Wesley, this is your papa calling. <laughs> and, you know, and, and he goes on, and he goes, ah, oh, damn, Marty Croft, Sid Croft, this, that, you know, Donald Trump, this, that, this, that. I mean, he goes on and on and on, and it's it's a joy. And I think every time I thought, how amazing that after forty five years, I feel like he's my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, Kathy too, and 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 I. And, and master, feel like he's your master. No, and, not my master. <laughs> not my master. No, but we all, we all, uh, you know, really treasure our time with Spencer, and he was fabulous at the year, last year's convention. Uh, I can't help but bring it up. A few years ago, there was a Land of the Lost movie made. A what? There was a what? <laughs> I, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. I don't know if I should bring it up, but do you guys have anything to say about it? Sure. Really? Kathy? Yeah. Well, we did a, Wesley and I did a cameo in it, and it wound up being cut. They had four different endings, and they went with the Matt Lauer ending as opposed to the one that we did. But our one was so bizarre, it, it didn't even make a hillbilly sense. Horrible. It was, we were parking attendants and we were in the La Brea tar pits and and then the Marshall character is kissing the well no no well, what was speaking so, Holly well no what he was in the original it was nutty in the original version he was a car parking attendant at the La Brea tar pits that was that got all cut because he couldn't get a job as an archaeologist right so he's the parking and so we we had obviously were a couple 
that had given you know our keys for being parked. So the scene was the very end of the very end of the movie. He and Anna Friel are walking through. They come back from the land of the lost. Kathy and I go, "Hey, uh, we need to. You know, here's our parking ticket. We need to get validated." That's the scene, by the way. But you got, and he goes, uh, "I don't need any validation. I found land of the lost." That was it. Did they put that on the BBC No, he found BBC? her. No, no, no. At the Land of Lost, and then he kisses her. Anyway, it was excellent no, writing. <laughs> really excellent writing. We were so mad. It's got to hold up over time. I don't, no, I don't think no, so. No, but it's on YouTube. You can see it. It was horrible, scene. guys. Yeah. And they awful. had promised all of us a, a, a nice cameo. And I went on the set uh, to Universal, and so did Phil. And Will Ferrell could not have been nicer. A huge fan of the show. You remember, he played Marshall Bull and Holly in the one, in that one movie, and he had just sung the day before because he sang, I sang the theme song in the show, and he sang the theme song in the movie. But he's playing the banjo, and there's a bug. You remember the bug scene with the bug lands on him, and he's singing Marshall Will and Holly on a routine expedition at the greatest earth. And the bug is starting to bite him, and Will and and, and Will and Holly are going oh, like that, and he keeps singing. And you start to every day. High on the rapids, he's like their tiny raft, and the bug gets really big, and Marsh and Will and Holly go ah, like like going over the raft. Anyway, and the bug finally, I think, it explodes, and you right, is that what? happens but he, he came over and and when uh, the best whole part of that is he goes that was good the, one. the funniest thing in the whole yeah, yeah that's what i thought he goes, good one. That, yeah. like, our scream was like a nice addition you know addition to his song and he goes good one yeah. you know and kept playing and i remember uh, uh danny mcbride was playing my character will so danny came over and uh I pretended all the execs were there at Universal. I, 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 I pretended I lit a torch and I handed it to Danny to pass the torch. And he, they could not have been nicer. They were just really sweet people. Were you guys locked in three seasons or just ran its course? Or? It ran its course. Uh, we, we were locked in. One of the reasons Spencer didn't do the third season, it was for money reasons and stuff like that, but he had not, they'd forgotten to have him sign his contract. So he was able to get out without any repercussion. Had he signed his contract, it would have been different. And the money reasons were not just for him. He was looking after all, all four of us. Uh, he wanted a small percentage for each of us of the merchandise. You know, they, they put out a lot of merchandise and he was fighting for that. And uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't let go of a, not a, a red cent. In fact, we saw somebody brought today, which I'd never seen, the pinball, little pinball machine. With we our, had all game boards, lunch boxes, <coughs> yeah. coloring books, all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah, it was, and stuff I'd never seen some of the stuff. You know, it's, it's crazy. We'll be on the internet and there'll be someone go, that's me, you know. It's interesting, Very you know. Did, uh, did you guys ever do a show with Ron Harper? Well, we, when I, mean, I was I mean on a convention, right? No, yeah. no, 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 no. But, but when I was on Days of Our Lives, his wife was on Days of Our Lives with me. So, so Ron was playing my uncle in Land of the Lost, and his wife was playing Sally on, La on Days of Our Lives. So it was like, oh, 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 okay, okay, yeah. I read all the men that auditioned to replace the father. I did all the readings with all the actors that came in, and... Uh, they asked me, you know, who, you know, at the end of seeing, I don't know, 35 different actors, who did you feel that you had the best chemistry with? And I said, Ron Harper, wow. without a doubt, Ron Harper. You know, I, I we felt very comfortable with him. But uh, on that note, read my book. Oh. <laughs> it takes an interesting turn. And, you know, Ron, Ron was doing Planet of the Apes. That was, He was fam yeah. famous well, for that, that show. show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Anybody else have a question they'd like to ask? I don't know how we're doing on timer. Are you on the candy man? Are you singing on the candy Yes. Is that you? Yes. On the candy man? Yes, and I'm actually, my vocals are actually on, uh, I was when I was at Disneyland, uh, they played the upbeated version of the Mickey Mouse Club, and those are my vocals. I was walking wow. down Main Street, and I'm like, that's me, that's wow. me. I didn't know that. Yeah. <clears throat> what the candy man can? No, 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 it was, uh, um, it's just an upbeat version. It goes, yeah. uh, come, come along and sing and sing a song and join the fam jamboree. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. -E Mickey Mouse. Dun, dun. Oh. It was just a song. Wow. Stuff. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so. I, I used to record. I actually was recorded for Motown. <laughs> it was a, a white boy band. 
You never heard of us. Now he you know what? He actually worked with the same producer. Mike Kerr, and yeah, Mike who became Kerr. the lieutenant governor of California. And he was a big producer and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, we didn't, I didn't even know this until just like two months ago that we both worked with the same record producer. Yeah. And, and Phil, what are you doing now? You're, you're, you're working? Uh, right now, I'm working at um, VoiceOvers in uh, Mazicon. Oh, oh, and you're doing it so well. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I'm uh, I'm trying to segue into doing voiceover work. So, um, in uh, kind of focused on doing stuff for cartoons, and uh, so I've got a, a reel, and you know, trying to get some of that work going. And he's got a girlfriend who's in the business. Won a, won a, 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 oh yeah, an Emmy, right? Uh, Mike, uh, she won an Emmy, uh, and so she's helping. Nominated five times and won once. Yeah, uh, so yeah, so very very cool. Kathy, what are you, what are you up to these days? <laughs> oh, never mind. We'll be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have. Um, I, like I said, my my book is out, and uh, which won, by the way, 2018 Best Indie. Uh, biography, and then it won Huge another award. award from Amazon. Right, and she sold out now. It's, you can buy them online, but they're sold out here at the at the show. Right, and uh, I had some family that has, have taken on a few health issues, and so my role at the moment is to be uh, uh, as, as much help as I can possibly be, and uh, you know, just do what you got to do. Yeah. And you know, I created Dragon Tales on PBS, one of the co-creators. Yeah, that was me. And uh, which ran for nine years, uh, produced by Children's Television Workshop and Sewing Pictures. And I did a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did four. I did four movies. I just finished one with William. I did one with William Shatner and Christopher Lloyd and Gene Smart called, called Senior Moment, which hopefully will be out. We'll see it's a comedy. And <laughs> We really are like brothers and sisters, guys. We love each other. We have so much fun. Kathy and I will actually bunk together at some shows, and you know, we will just sit up and laugh and, and just have the best time and stuff. And I don't know, how, how are we doing on time, guys? I don't even... Got about five minutes. Got about five minutes? Anybody, anybody have another question? Do they want to talk? Oh, there was some footage, I guess, I don't know if your sister had or not, or something that I saw, some behind the scenes. Oh, isn't that really, terrific? It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, know, I know it's more, dark. It I know dark. it is. But for that time, and what you were working with, the film we're working with, I mean, that's just the way stuff was shot. Uh, probably a home camera, I'm sure. Yeah, like yeah, and it was on the set. That's what you're talking yeah, about, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you yeah. See how little of the set is actually there from what we see. You know, so much more is added. There's, you know, just the rocks and the, yeah. you know, the cave where you were. But I mean, but the other stuff was just blind. There's nothing there. There's a scene I think with film. There's a big rock in the middle, mm -hmm. on top of it, or something like that. Um, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know if there was more of that footage or no, you know, that's no, all that's all there is. Okay. But um, you, so, so we'll see. It's probably. Yeah. If I were to watch it with you, I'd be able to explain what you're actually right. seeing, and then you'd see like a grander, you know, picture. This, this set, was this set from Donnie and Marie also? Was it the? It was. This was at sort of, General Services. We, like a swimming pool, right, or whatever we had two. We had two sound stages, okay. huge. One sound stage was all jungle, the lagoon, yes. and the exterior of the cave, which we had to climb up with the basket and the whole thing. Okay. The next sound, ne next uh, uh, sound stage was the interior of the cave. And then we had the largest, it was, it was a green screen, not blue screen, or a blue screen, not green screen as it is now. And the whole, the wall, the whole sound stage, the floor, everything. So when they shrunk us down with the dinosaurs, they would put us on the green, on the, well, on, on the blue screen. In fact, the reason I had to change color shirt in the first season from blue to khaki was it kept chroma keying out and becoming invisible. Because it was brand new technology. Right, and it was the first time ever they'd taken the animation with the dinosaurs. The stop frame was film, and we were videotape. And they were able to, while we were there, would meld us in, play the the film footage, and take the video and put it onto the film. It was a technique had never been tried before. Two different speeds. Yeah. So and, 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 and it worked. And it took one guy. I don't remember the guy's name. 
took him a, a, quite a while, sleepless nights, to try to figure yeah. out. Wow, so, yeah. I, you, so you, in that clip, in that yeah. little home movie that you saw, did you happen to remember the part where we're holding the actual dinosaur, the claymation yes. dinosaurs, yeah, the, and yeah, and yeah. It, it was smart of us. Maybe one, my sister or whoever was filming us said, "Turn them to the side," yeah. and we we gave them the profile so you Fresh could see, cool. yeah, wow. Grumpy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we had Grumpy and Dopey that mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's really, it was really. Good. I just know if you had more, yeah. you know. And we had every celebrity in the world would come visit our set. Elton John, Stallone, Jim oh, Neighbors, uh, Charo. Charo, tell him about Charo. Charo chasing me around. Charo chasing Jocko around. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> but we had a great time, and I know we're wrapping up. And in just a moment, if you guys want to stay and join us, uh, we do. I'm doing a panel, which is amazing. I don't know if you guys have heard. So it's a charity that we'll be here for another panel. Kathy and I'll be here, and I think Johnny Whitaker's coming. It's called Project Fan Care, and Christine Kilmer is the founder of this, and it talks, what we're going to talk about, we'll be a therapist here, about how the media has helped identify groups that, marginalized groups, uh, how you get to see yourself on television, mental illness and depression, how you see in different shows, you may recognize yourself and understand and find a way to, to, to navigate through that, how the conventions bring us all together, that this is a safe space, that we get to, and get to live in this bubble and work through other issues which Christine's going to be sharing how she became the founder of this with her own issues by watching Buffy an episode of Buffy that changed her life and so we're going to be talking about how how fan care saves lives and the only way she makes money is by selling t-shirts she has a booth in the Jefferson place and so if you if you guys want to stick around um, There'll be no cameras allowed when we do a Q&A and stuff because it'll become a safe place. So nobody filming anything or photographing anything. And, it's, and we have some fun stories because I'm going to tell you how the reverse of it, how fans have saved celebrities' lives. So uh, please stick around and join us for this. But really, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it means the world 45 years later. You know, it, it, we're still together, and I think we should close with the closing song. What do you Didn't think? Didn't we already sing it? I know, but I think one more time. Oh, you want to sing it again? I would like to sing it again. Wait, wait, we do have one more. Wait, what, what? Uh, <clears throat> Will and Wait, 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 so let me explain. Let me explain. So with, after, after our dad left, I had to go back in the recording studio for the third season because the, the, that song, the opening song, didn't work anymore, right? <laughs> so the new lyrics are... Will, Will and Holly Marshall, Marshall, as the earth beneath them trembled, lost their father through the door of time. Uncle Jack was searching and found the kids at last, looking for a way to escape, 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 escape. From the land of the lost, from the land of the lost. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. So, one more time. When I look all around, I can't believe the things I found. Now I need to find my way. I'm lost, I'm lost. Find me living in the land of the lost, 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 lost. Living in the land of the lost, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.